Welcome to Keep It Real with Darnell Stokes and Dr. Denise McDermott. We couldn't be more thrilled to be here with you today. I'm Kathleen O'Toole, an Emmy Award winning reporter, mother, and family quarantine referee. We are starting the show at a very strange time, but you know what? We thought no better time to, to introduce you to these two extraordinary people than right now. Darnell, Dr. Denise, welcome. Hello. How excited are you? I'm so excited. excited. Yeah, I can't I'm so happy it. to be here. So let's start with Jarnell. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your passions, your philosophy, who you are. Well, yeah, my name is Jarnell Stokes. I am a professional basketball player, entrepreneur, a philanthropist, visionary. And honestly, I go by a lot of titles, but I don't believe in titles. So with all that being said, I'm just a guy and I'm here to uh, express some thoughts. Um, I'm not here to be a saint. I'm not here to impress anyone. I just have a viewpoint that I feel the world could use and I think is authentic to the point where I haven't really seen it as much as I would like. So with that being said, um, I'm just a guy and I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Dr. Denise? Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm a mother. I'm a healer. I'm a doctor. I have a podcast show. I also, I actually I love your family referee stuff. In fact, I just told my son, because I'm here on quarantine, honey, I'm recording now, and he loves his rap music. So who am I and why am I here? I agree with Jarnell. I think the most important thing for me personally, as a mother and a doctor and an adult and child psychiatrist, is to use my knowledge, wisdom, and my experience mm -hmm. to inspire you to be your best self and to think for yourself. And also, we want to have discussions on this show where we can push the envelope that all viewpoints matter to us. And we're really excited to hear from you. Reach out to us on social media. Let us know what you want us to talk about. So how did you guys get to know one another? What, how did you meet and how did your working together evolve? Do you want to start, Jay? Well, yeah, all I can say here is that um, energies meet. <laughs> you know, we are totally different, but we share the same mindset. And we basically connected trying to go after the same purpose. So we connected through a group on Twitter. But with that being said, I'll let Denise continue uh, to explain more. So first of all, I actually feel at this point that Jarnell's part of my family. I met him in 2017 on Twitter through that group of great people that we'll probably end up interviewing on the show. Yep. But what I loved about Jarnell is I loved his heart energy. And right when I met him, summer of 2017, he was about to go play in China, and he and I both love inspiring children. And I had him on my show, and we did an interview on Pay It Forward and the importance of healthy mindset and altruism. So we really connect with wanting to help children and inspire people and adults. There you go. So I agree. You, you guys plan to work together with this champion mindset and kind of help uh, influence and inspire people. Uh, how do you imagine doing that in a unique way? Well, I'm gonna just say this. As a child psychiatrist, I am also an ADHD expert, but we're living at the time where everyone's attention spans, like tell me the bottom line. So not only do I wanna express my wisdom, my experience, we wanna make this fun. We wanna have guests that are engaging. We might throw memes up. So I think our unique perspective is that I have years of experience as a doctor and a mother, and I've helped people go from wanting to kill themselves to not wanting to kill themselves. I've had people, even during this quarantine, that have been going through domestic violence, substance abuse, porn addictions. So I have all this experience, but we want to bring it to all of you in an entertaining way that means something to you. And we're going to do the best we can to keep it fast paced because we know we're in the world of social media where you got to grab and go and get people's attention. Yeah. And we want a propaganda free news source. I feel as if just in my career as a basketball player, I've I'm one of the best at entertaining people, obviously. I've been able to play at the highest level. But the one thing in my life that's unfulfilling right now is the ability to help others and 
share my purpose in a way where basketball just never could. I mean, I talk to fans all the time and they ask for pictures and photos and autographs. And to be honest, I want them to check out Keep It Real. <laughs> That's what I, you know, if I can do a favor. So I just want to help people in an authentic way that's propaganda free. And uh, right now I can see there being a need for it. Well, Jarnell, you segued so nicely into like really what's on everybody's mind uh, right now is our, our whole lifestyles, all of us. You're in Colorado, mm -hmm. Dr. Denise is in California, I'm in South Florida, and all our lives have changed and not just in this country. Our, our assistant producers in Greece, it's a whole different world there. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have some really unique perspectives, Dr. Denise and Jarnell, especially um, coming from China with the COVID-19 virus. Would you just tell us a little bit about what that was like? Because to us, you were at ground zero. I know you weren't in Wuhan, but you were in China and had to leave and stop playing basketball because of this. Tell us about that odyssey. Oh well, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it was crazy just to experience coming from China. I mean, I was, we were picked as the number two team in the league. So we were expected to win the championship. Um, with all that being said, I, uh, just randomly, this virus situation kept coming up. The next thing you know, I have the flu. So I'm in China when the virus first started with the flu. I couldn't, if you, you can look it up. You know, I'm the best player on my team and I wasn't able to play the last three games. So I didn't know how serious the situation was, but I played it safe. I, I locked myself in the room. I put the latch on the door. I, um, when I wanted to go get something to eat, my brother went out and got it for me. You know, I, I really quarantined for two weeks straight. And then next thing you know, the league is um, postponing. So then they're sending, they're, you know, not really communicating to the players as much as we would like. So we're stuck in a room still trying to figure out what the hell do we do until suddenly it was just, it just occurred to me that this game, it's just the game, even though it's my life at the time. So in regards to, you know, I was able to walk away with a huge salary. I still would say I missed out on about a million, a little over a million dollars when it comes to uh, not showing back up for the CBA, but uh, it was worth it. And let me not, let me let Denise talk before I go into details about the travel situation and how hectic it was trying to get back into America, even while experiencing some of the same situations that I experienced in China. So I'll let Denise talk and let's uh, catch back up with that one. <laughs> So it's interesting, Jarnell. They're actually showing on the news now or postulating the scientists that the COVID-19 may or may not have been here a lot sooner. And that's going to be to be announced. <clears throat> it's really interesting. When Jarnell was sick, I was sick at the same time in January. Mm -hmm. I actually missed two weeks of actually almost the full month of work, but I did work from home. Mm -hmm. I had the fever, the sweats, the dry cough, and the, a little bit of troubles breathing, and we didn't know that COVID could possibly be here. I went to the urgent care. My son had the same symptoms. Luckily, I did quarantine myself naturally because I know that the flu can be deadly as well, so I didn't mess around, and I don't know yet because we don't have, in America right now, we don't have the test to know. You know, like the t-shirt got milk? I'm hoping that I can wear a t-shirt that says got antibodies. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I was the sickest I've ever been at the same time you were. And I think a lot of people are wondering, and until we have more data scientifically to get out of the stay at home and roll the country back into safety, we all have to play it safe. But I'm mm. intrigued coming from China back to the United States, what was that like? I interviewed you on my show. I'd love for you to give a little bit of a idea. You, you really let me know what happened. They were taking your temperature. Tell yeah. us about all the times they took your temperature on that flight. Well, yeah, it all started with a, a call to go home from my agent. Um, so when I first booked my first flight, I had my brother and my trainer with me. We went to the uh, airport. And uh, next thing you know, there were a bunch of cops there telling everyone to go home. You can't fly. All the flights are canceled. Like, we were confused. Like, why are cops 
saying this as opposed to the flights. But um, so we tried the next day, didn't work. <laughs> tried the next day after that, and it didn't work. But then the fourth time, it worked. So we were able to then go through the airport. Me personally, you know, I, you know, in China right now, if you get caught without a mask or the proper necessities, if you get caught going outside of quarantine for more than one day out of each week, you're automatically sent to jail. You're sent to the uh, police station. So dealing with that, um, I was frustrated, ready to go home. There's no place like home. And um, being temperature checked <laughs> at the airport, um, we I might have got temperature checked like four or five times. Me personally, I don't feel good about this situation, but I had on four pair of jackets, three pants, like three pair of socks, uh, like two hats and like five masks on. And uh, when I tried to get on their airplane, by that time I had just caught a freaking drench of sweat. And uh, they were flu testing everyone at that time. <laughs> I was sitting first class, so I think that's maybe why they worked with me. But the first 10 minutes they told me to get off uh, stay in China, you go quarantine again for another 14 days. The next thing you know, this beautiful smile <laughs> turned into an angry face. And um, I literally just let them have it to the point where I, I literally um, made it to where I made sure they checked me four or five times. And on the fifth one, just like the flights, um, they let me stay on. And my brother and trainer, they were in a pretty bad situation. They were asking if they should leave with me or stay. And um, I told them to stay and I, I got it all handled. And next thing you know, they were nice enough to continue testing me. But that just goes to show, you know, I, I come over to America the following day and no one's wearing a mask. No one cares about this virus. Oh, the government is covering it up. Oh, um, you know, this can't touch black people. I've heard that one. I've also heard that um, if you're wearing a mask, you're, you should be sick. You know, you're sick if you're wearing a mask. So I saw it from a mile away that mm -hmm. America was about to go through a much worse situation in China because in China, it's the total opposite. Here is freedom. There, they're grabbing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quarantine now <laughs> or you're out of here. So. <laughs> terrible situation that turned into paradise wow. you're lucky to be home yeah welcome back Chernow. welcome back to the usa mm -hmm. so happy to be back it's i never know felt like this before <laughs> i know and also what i love is right before we started filming i got to meet your brother i get to see your happiness i get to see your freedom and thanks kathleen for keeping us going but it just we just have to be grateful for our health I think that's one of the most important things that Jarnell and I are passionate about and Kathleen about being in this moment. And this is the only moment we have right now and I get to share it with all of you and everyone tuning in. So mm. welcome back and I'm glad you're healthy. It's great to see your smile. Yeah, so happy to be back. Guys, do you mind if I share a little bit of the COVID-19 headlines right now? And then uh, Dr. Denise and Jarnell can help us because sometimes these are daunting, but we have to listen to them and you can help us figure out how to start processing all these headlines. Would that be all right? Great. Please, so um, the COVID-19 numbers on this Saturday, April 18th, according to figures kept by Johns Hopkins University, the world has 2.2 million total confirmed cases and now I have the chills to read this to you that the death toll is at 150,000 people. Oh, I just got chills too. I want to send so much love right in this moment. I know you're going to give the headlines. I just have to stop and send love and um, emotional connection to everyone that's lost anyone, all the people on the front line, the heroes, the post people, everyone, um, the doctors, the nurses, and I'm sending love to all those who have passed. So Kath, keep going, I won't interrupt. I just got the same chills. No, please do. This is how you're teaching us how to process. Yeah, and I have tears and those are tears of connecting. Yeah, so worldwide, 570, 5,000 patients can say they beat COVID-19, 575,000. So that's like a yeah. uh, social distancing in the United States. Reuters is reporting that better than expected social distancing is helping. 
an influential research model now lowered the projected coronavirus death toll by 12% here in this country. Japan, meantime, uh, you know, a neighbor to where Jarnell has just spent a lot of time, doctors there are warning that the country's medical system could actually collapse due to corona. Initially, Japan appeared to have the virus under control. Well, today they passed 10,000 confirmed cases. And here's kind of an example of what's going on there. One ambulance carrying a patient with COVID-19 kind of symptoms got turned away by 80 hospitals before the man could be seen. I know more chills, right, Dr. Denise? That was from the BBC. I know, right? Um, Here's something I found today that's in the works that you'll like to hear about. A university in London is training dogs to sniff out coronavirus. They'll be given fabric worn by coronavirus patients, and they're gonna see if COVID-19 has an odor. Oh, there's one of my detection dogs. They're gonna see if coronavirus has an odor that dogs can detect. There's optimism because medical detection dogs have already been trained to sniff out cancer, Parkinson's and malaria, and that's being reported by the Mirror in the UK. Denise, this is a number you've wanted, so here we go. Um, at 11.30 GMT, that's when I prepared this little news segment, the world welcomed already 121,000 babies into the world for the day, and that number was like climbing, and I can't wait at the end of the day before I go to bed just for my own sake, I'm gonna look at that final number because it's just, it's the balance that we wanted. We wanna, um, we wanna look at, we wanna honor the suffering and get the information, but we also want everyone to leave here with some hope and right. inspiration. So I always wanted on the news when they're talking about things going wrong, I also wanted to hear good news. Right. And it's so beautiful to think right. about all those babies being born right now. So um, here's finally, you know, there's so many acts of, there's just so many acts of service at this time, but I, I thought this one was just kind of was poignant. Saturday Night Live weekend update co-host Michael Che, you might be a fan of his, he's honoring the memory of his grandmother. Martha died of coronavirus complications last week, and to pay tribute to Martha, Che is going to pay one month's rent for all 160 apartments in the New York City public housing complex that she lived in. He says it's just a drop in the bucket, but this donation stood out for the love of a grandmother. Well, Thank so you, cute. Kathleen. You just yeah. inspired me. You took us through what's going on, emotions, and then hope. And that's exactly what we wanna do on this show every time in all different ways. Really connect and remember that we're all in this together. We've gotta to feel hopeful. What can we control, right? And Denise, uh, Dr. Denise, you've taught us a word that helps us to understand because someone could hear those headlines. I can hear them. Jarnell can hear them and you can hear them and we all process them differently. So mm -hmm. you taught us a word to try to help us understand to some people, they might not be able to hear any of that. Other people need the information. Teach us this word and how it can help us understand those around us. Okay, so as a psychiatrist, I believe in wellness, not illness. Our words, thoughts, and actions carry a vibration, and we can be our own best healers. So as a doctor, when someone comes to me, I don't like the word disorder, so I wanted to come up with a word that we can all relate to called neurostyle, that we all process and perceive information in our own unique way. And this is all encompassing. For me as a doctor in Western medicine, I bridge Eastern thought, I bridge spirit, mind, body. And this word for me, again, is the unique way in which we process and perceive the world. That encompasses biological, psychological, social, culture, and gender. So when we're all watching the news and we all have our backgrounds, Jarnell has his, you have yours, we bring an unknown, unknown bias too to every situation. We're our own universes. So again, the word neurostyle gives us the permission that it's okay to have unique perspectives. And that's what we want to champion on this show to really validate that whatever your political party is, your skin color, your sexuality, that you mean something to us and that you should mean something to yourself and that we should respect others' viewpoint. So neurostyle. 
Jarnell, if you don't mind sharing, I know for you, you're not one of these who tune out the news. You think it's important to pay attention to what's going on in the world around you. What is your neural style? How do you process the news in a way that just doesn't, you know, you know, paralyze you? What is your neural style? Well, yeah, I get a bunch of perspectives. I'm a very curious individual, so even if I heard the truth, I'm questioning it, <laughs> you know? And that's just who I am as a person. I question my own mom. And uh, I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's helped me so much with understanding the micro and macro economics to, you know, just how the world works and how everything is working together to just my e-commerce business. I'm able to make profit from just understanding uh, different situations. But when it comes to the news, if you aren't watching, you're more than likely misinformed. If you are watching, <laughs> you're probably misinformed too. But at the same time, it's probably <laughs> a better situation that you're able to get different perspectives. And it's usually somewhere in the middle. Uh, going back to neurostyle, another word that Denise has really helped me with is epigenics. That's really, really changed my life. I mean, Denise is like my mom, you know, when it comes to, because she's helped me so much when it comes to uh, my spiritual side. And in that regards, uh, I think the news is a terrible substance when it comes to the word epigenics, because it's instilling fear. And that's why it's so important to have shows like this, where we talk about the positive side too, and there isn't any propaganda. We don't want anything from anyone but to help, and that's it. Well said. Denise, explain epigenics to us because it's really complicated. <laughs> give, give us like oh, the epigenics the 101. Super simple. Okay. Epigenetics. Okay. Epigenetics. Okay. Epigenetics. At different times through this current lifetime, as a doctor, we were almost taught that um, genetics and environment had equal influence. But now we know, if you imagine that we all are built of, you're there, Jarnell's there, I'm here, we have our material DNA, the substance of who we are. But what epigenetics and why we're so passionate is we're standing here, but we've got the world around us. And what that means is the food that we eat, the thoughts that we have, the people we hang out with, the news that we ingest, everything in our environment influences our DNA. And so epigenetics is kind of what turns on. You think of it as the light switch, turning on or off certain genes for optimal health, well-being, and thought process. So why Jarnell and I are so aligned is about spirit, mind, and body, and that we can influence our health and our thinking by how we eat, how we do our fitness, mindful ingestion of the news, being critical thinkers, having awareness, self-love and altruism. So epigenetics, and we also, Bruce Lipton, actually, um, he and all these pioneers in integrative medicine and mind and spirit connection with science have shown that we actually can influence our DNA, our environment could influence it up to 80 to 90%, not just 50%. So sometimes people feel like, oh, my genetics, I'm going to have diabetes, or I'm going to be an alcoholic. And we can have different shows about this, but we can influence our DNA. So epigenetics is an empowerment, the empowerment of influencing your own DNA to switch on and have optimal health. And Denise, Jarnell and I are very interested, um, some of the other uh, studies that you've done about quantum physics and a time like this where we're going through a pandemic where there's um, an opportunity when we're in crisis that there's a lot of flux in the world. And Jarnell, I, I think you're interested in this too. It, it's hard. Please explain that to us. Okay. Because it's, well, it's, so first of, okay, thank you. So first of all, I want to make sure everyone knows I am not a quantum physicist, but I am like Jarnell I'm curious and I love the scientific method. So uh, the things I like to do is I like to learn about something. And then for me personally, I have so much experience. I've had, I've had 40,000 hours of patient care. So I know how to empower people. And so essentially I see people go from crisis to stabilization to thrive. Again, crisis, stabilization, and thrive. But if you look at that, that happens in economics. 
It happens in basketball. It happens in sports. It happens in mathematics. It happens in all of, it's a universal kind of situation that happens and everything is energy. And I need to really, really give credit to Dr. Daniel Siegel at UCLA. I trained there as a child psychiatrist. He's a pioneer and innovator. He's a child psychiatrist, a mindfulness expert. And he personally, he has met with quantum physicists and people all around the world. And I'm a geek, I will admit it, I'm a universe geek. In 2015, I went to UCLA where I got to see Dr. Dan Siegel with Minos Kafatos, quantum physicist, works with Deepak Chopra. And in the thing, it was beautiful. It was like light bulb goes on. I always tell my patients, when you're in suffering, it's the most optimal time to use all that energy to take what you learn in your suffering go to neutrality and then thrive. And when I was at their lecture, Minos explained that there's something, and I'm gonna explain, there's Newtonian physics and there's quantum physics. Newtonian is the material understanding of the world and the quantum includes the unseen energy. I do not think one trumps the other. I think that they both are in synergy. Everything builds. So I wanna thank all of mathematics, all of physicists. This isn't who's right or wrong. So what's cool, that Mino said at this lecture, and then Dan was there when we were talking about integrating psychiatry and physics, is that at the zero point energy in quantum physics is the time when the system has the most suffering. And they found in a quantum universe that there's all this unseen energy. And they explain that it's infinite. So the example I want to give is there's 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet. And if we wanted to, if Jarnell and I wanted to go rob a bank, which we're not going to do, mm -hmm. um, don't, we're not, we're a little tasked with our mask. Um, if we were to go and try to take 0 0.01 cents out of everyone's account and then have that grow, that's what happens at zero point. There's unseen energy where there's infinite potential for change. So the reason why that's so interesting is I've seen it happen with my patients. I have people that wanted to kill themselves and now have three children. I have people who were bullied because they were gay that are now on reality television. I have people that were using cocaine and playing sports that are now successful in their career. So I have done this personally, inspired people through West meets East to go from crisis stabilization and thrive. And that's what this show is gonna do because I'm, I'm not okay with watching news that's always fear-based. Mm -hmm. That is not okay. Mm -hmm. That does not create optimal health. That does not encourage us to thrive. And we need more news and shows that take us from crisis to stabilization and thrive, because that's when people are gonna make the biggest difference. There's gonna be the most love in the world and hope. And that is what I'm passionate about. You can see she's so lackluster with her thoughts, right? I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not the poker straight face psychiatrist. <laughs> and all those shows where like, like you see this look of the psychiatrist, the glazed like, eyes, the nerds, every time when people come in my office, they're like, ooh, and like, I actually make eye things and smile. I'm not like, tell me about your <laughs> <laughs> So Jarnell, the, the, the show is, is called Keeping It Real. I mean, how, how have you, I mean, I don't want to ask you how have you kept it real in your whole lifetime. So maybe it's better to just say, like, how are you keeping it real now? What are you mm. doing? Um, you know, you've had a you've had a significant left turn in your career, but you're 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 not just surviving; you're thriving. How are you keeping it real? I love that word. And as you can see previously, you can see why I learned so much from Denise. Appreciate those thoughts. <laughs> like she's so entertaining with it too, isn't she? I love it. I love it. Like you, you just wouldn't expect that. But um, how am I keeping it real? I'm keeping it real by focusing on myself, my path, and my journey. Um, I do watch the news. I'm very informed with the macro and micro of what's going on. But I can just tell you my morning routine. I mean, I wake up 4.45 every morning, meditate, pray, read. Then I uh, get ready to run. Once I come back, it's about 7.30, 8, 8 a.m. And around that time, I'm able to um, take smoothies, nutrition, uh, take the next steps as far as holistic health with yoga. Um, and then from there, you know, I really, really have, you know, bought into Dr. Sebi's plan. And he's helped me lose 15 to 20 pounds. Like seriously, if you knew me 
as a pro um, in the early parts of my career, I was overweight. And that was an issue with my, uh, you know, just being able to get up and down the court and run and jump. I was always strong. But um, so I've kind of turned vegan. You know, that's another way I've kept it real. Another way I've kept it real is fasting from bullshit, <laughs> which is um, <laughs> I don't watch cable anymore. I never scroll down my social media timeline. Um, it's hard for me to, you know, talk unless it's, you know, something that's purposeful. And I just don't waste time. So mm-hmm. how have I kept it real? I mean, even with this show, I mean, we're obviously there are dangers in the world from higher powers and for us to be able to talk as clearly about what they can't talk about on cable and other platforms that's as that's about as real as you get to uh, give ourselves all our knowledge and um our purpose into this show i hope that answered your question i answered it the uh, best way i can <laughs> Dr. Denise, keep it real. How are you keeping it real this week? Wow. So I am keeping it real by I do have really a a routine with a bedtime and a wake up time. I've borrowed a neighbor's bike. So I've been biking and then the pool. I love the pool, but we can't swim right now. So I've been doing my exercise. And then I have to tell you, we keep it real at our house with music. My son has a, we have a karaoke machine downstairs. And last night we had the lights going, we had his rap going. And then I have a station I like from the United Kingdom. So we raised the vibe in our home with music. And then the other way I kept it real this week is by talking with all of you so many times. Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate. I know that this is a very sad time, but I'm using this time of the pandemic to like inspire myself to reach the highest level of creativity. Mm -hmm. So I kept it real. I interviewed four people this week, anywhere from a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist to jiu-jitsu champions to a, um, a Beverly Hills therapist and to a cancer survivor. And that's all on my Dr. Denise show. So I'm keeping it real by connecting, just like Charnel. We both like mindful ingestion of what we do with food and what we our thoughts and our routine. And so my mindful ingestion is really like Jarnell. Jarnell doesn't like small talk. Mm-hmm. He looks more structural, let's get something done. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. In fact, I was at a talk one time with a celebrity, and he said that small talk was like his kryptonite. Mm-hmm. And so I've been keeping it real by being productive and having fun. There you go. Jarnell, talking about mindful ingestion, tell us about um, where we can find you on social media. You've got, you're a guy who has so many projects in the work, I can't even keep them straight. But I know nutrition and mindful ingestion is part of it. Tell us about that. Well, yeah. Um, I started this project after my uh, recent downfall with the Nuggets. I'm out here in Denver, in Leadville, actually, right now. Um, Just from that situation, I've moved here. I don't really call anywhere home. But to answer your question, um, I was recently released from the Nuggets about two years ago after a big injury. And um, before that, you know, I was top 10 player, you know, drafted to my hometown team, um, expected to be, you know, the freaking LeBron back in middle school, high school, you know, that's the type of hype that was around it. And I say all this to say that the second I was no good, you know, um, fans, coaches, teammates, friends, even being around family just wasn't the same. So I was going through a uh, self-identity crisis and I made a vow to myself that I'm living based on purpose from now on. And I can't do all these projects without people. Like I couldn't do this show without you or Denise. So I'm not taking the credit for doing a bunch of projects. My ROI is people for sure. But at the same time, I just um, believe that these projects have given me a great amount of purpose and is a huge reason why I wake up. But while saying all of this, I still love basketball. People help me save time so that I can play basketball. And now I don't have to deal with all the junk. You know, once I'm off the court, it's focusing on purpose as opposed to 
what coach said, which normally doesn't matter, you know, unless it was, you know, something serious. But, you know, I, I just don't take life as serious anymore. And I started these projects to uh, really help people in a way that basketball never could. And the projects are um, Stokes Superfoods, which is a herbal, holistic uh, superfoods company. We are um, specifically working towards making medicine more mainstream, holistic medicine that is. Um, I had a grandma who had dialysis, who goes through dialysis every day. And um, with that in mind, I'm able to really understand what's going on in the hospital system. And I also have another project called Wings to Fly. It's a children's book series that will eventually uh, launch in about, I say it'll launch in a, at 422, so in about four days. And um, it's dedicated to my little sister. Uh, I grew up as a kid, I was always hated on. I was saying, I, I know Denise taught me to stop using the word hated on, but that's how I felt as a kid before I grew into um you know, the next ranking. And I just felt like all my uh, friends and family members, I was a bench rider. So I never really felt the love. And now I'm seeing my sister go through the same exact situation. So I wrote this book to her, um, but also to 5 million other people, (laughs) you know, but personally it really hits home. And that's the project I'm most excited about right now. Oh, awesome. Denise, tell us about where we can find you and the projects you've got going on right now. Well, I'm really super excited. You can tell by just being here with both of you. So this idea of launching a show where we could represent different people's neuro styles has been near and dear to my heart since I met Jarnell. So I want to just have the gratitude of this week. So one of my favorite things I've done this week in this project is launching our show and our vision. So I want to thank both of you. And I want to thank Kat, who's our covert avatar behind the scenes in Greece. Um, <laughs> we love you, Kat. And so, um, and then the other thing that I'm passionate about is my show, The Dr. Denise Show, that's on Apple and iTunes. And I just was really fortunate because I'm stuck here 24 seven, not stuck. I'm actually enjoying my time with my son as long as I don't do homework with him. (laughs) As long as I hire that puppy out, we're in, we're in like sync, we're in Kumbaya. So I've been really enjoying my show. In fact, I have two more interviews I'm doing today on the Dr. Denise show. So I'm going to be getting scientists, doctors, athletes, and that's what we're going to be doing, but in a different unique way here. My Dr. Denise show is going to be longer interviews. This one's going to pop, pop, pop here. And then, of course, I'm a doctor and healer in Manhattan Beach. And I'm a mom. And I'm also a really good friend. If you're my friend, I call you. I've got friends on the front lines in the ICUs. They call me late at night. I send people love. So besides these projects, I want you to know that I do a lot of selfies, which might sound funny. But they're not about me going, hey, I'm so... No, I actually... When I do a selfie... I'm actually pausing and sending love out to all of you. Mm. So I'm really doing my social media with mindful intention. And so I pray for people that I love. And we've got to remember we can do that all the time, no matter what project we're doing, what country we're in. We can smile when someone delivers something for us. We can say thank you. And we have to remember that all of us matter. And so that's my biggest passion is inspiring all. And that's one of Jarnell and I's alignment. Just like Nike does just do it. We're like inspire all. And I like to capitalize the I and then the ALL because when individuals thrive, we all thrive. And so remember that no matter what your situation is, like Jarnell one minute thought he wasn't going to be playing basketball. Now look at him. Well, you might have unemployment right now, but use your creative mind adapt in this time of the pandemic you are more powerful than you can ever think and for those of us who have more to give give if you have food shelter and clothing and you have extra money and you can do something to help anyone do it okay because that's what's going to make the world a better place and that's the unifying factor that vision and all the projects i do and that's why i love you kathleen and journal and kat and thank you guys for this today thank you sorry i let us go a little long but This was so amazing. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, Jarnell. And thanks for keeping it real. Was it raining, Jarnell? 
Oh, it was snowing. I was freezing. Oh, oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I was like shaking to death. 